council in accordance with the Sunshine Law in the following manner. Notice advertised in the Burlington County Times and Camden Carrier Post on January 7, 2021, and posted on the bulletin board on the same date. Mr. Smith? Mr. Jenny? Here. Ms. Pareo? Here. Mr. Lyon? Here. Mr. Burrell? All right, first order of business, we have an ordinance on the second reading. Ordinance 2021-13, it's an ordinance establishing adult use cannabis as a conditionally permitted use within certain business and industrial zoning districts. As this is a uh, ordinance on second reading, we do have to have a public hearing, so I'd have a motion to open up to the public, please. Motion. Second. Jamie. Can you just do all in favor? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Opposed? Motion Hearing. Carries. Motion carries. We're going to open up this ordinance and this ordinance only, 2021-13, uh, to the public. Anyone that wants to comment on that, please step forward, state your name for the record. Seeing no one um, stepping forward, I'd like to have a motion to close to the public. Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Uh, so I need a, a motion to approve Ordinance 2021-13, please. So moved. Second. Mr. Jenny? Aye. Ms. Pareo? Aye. Mr. Lyon? Aye. Motion carried. Uh, second order, Ordinance 2021-14, Ordinance to amend and supplement the Code of the Township of Del Rand, Part 2, Chapter 150, entitled Fees, with new Section 150-18 to collect a statutory authorized 2% municipal transfer tax on cannabis sales by Class 1, 2, and 5 license holders, and a 1% municipal transfer tax on cannabis sales by Class 3 license holders. As this is also on a second reading, uh, we need to have a public hearing. Can I have a motion to open to the public, please? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All, any opposed? All right, so we're open to the public. Anybody that wishes to make a comment on this ordinance and this ordinance only, please step forward and state your name for the record. Seeing no one, I'll take a motion to close to the public. Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All any opposed? Motion carries. <coughs> Uh, we have resolu oh, I'm sorry, we need to uh, take a vote. I need a motion to approve Ordinance 2021-14. Motion. Second. Mr. Jenny? Aye. Ms. Pareo? Aye. Mr. Lyon? Aye. Motion carries. Resolutions. Resolutions 2021-123, authorizing the submission to the voters of the Township of Del Rand at the general election on November 2nd, 2021, a proposition authorizing an annual levy, 400000 for the establishment of Del Rand Township Open Space Preservation Fund, as permitted by NJSA 4012-15.7, for a period not exceeding 20 years. Can I get a motion, please? So moved. Second. Mr. Jenny? Aye. Ms. Pareo? Aye. Mr. Lyon? Aye. Motion carries. Uh, motion. I need a motion authorizing the payment of bills, including all purchases made under the cooperative purchasing agreement. Motion. Second. Mr. Jenny? Aye. Ms. Pareo? Aye. Mr. Lyon? Aye. Motion carries. All right, uh, we'll get into the work session part of the evening. Uh, the first item up is our 2020 municipal audit. Um, Jeff, uh, I think yes. uh, you're up. Okay. Um, we review the uh, two 2020 uh, audit at the exit conference attended by the mayor and the CFO and myself, along with representatives from the auditing firm of Bowman and Company. Uh, the audit was um, very favorable from a uh, financial position that the township is in and also with respect to findings and comments. Uh, you have uh, a responsibility as the township council to review those comments. There's only one. Um, we pointed it out. And at the next uh, public meeting, we should have a resolution adopting the, um, the audit along with a corrective action statement for that one comment, which we'll have prepared. 
but it was an excellent audit and a really good start by um, our new CFO, Karima, did a nice job. Yeah, I, I've had the, I don't know, fortune or misfortune to look at a lot of these over the years, and uh, we are, it is a very favorable audit, very happy with it. Anybody else on council have any comments or anything? All right, we'll get that um, for the next meeting. All right. All right, uh, next up is the American Rescue Plan. I think uh, that's also you, Jeff. All right. Um, we received our first check in the amount of $863,096.90 from the American Rescue Plan, and we'll receive a second check approximately the same time next year. It comes in two installments. The use of the funds are limited. I attach the financial statement or the financial um, notice, the finance notice from the New Jersey Division of Local Government Services in the areas that we can use it. I know we've had some initial discussions. One of those areas that um, you can use the funds are for infrastructure in the sanitary sewer. We all know that we have a significant uh, project that's coming up with respect to the uh, sewer line that's along Route 130 that. Uh, has numerous issues and would more than eat up all of this probably when uh, by time we're done uh, tonight we're just trying to um, have you start thinking about what you want to do with it the other area yeah, that we could use the money on is there was a drop in revenues as a result of COVID most of it came in the area of um, uh, fines uh, in the court uh, police uh, wrote a lot less tickets the courts operated at a lower level and so there was a significant drop there uh, and also construction code which is obviously picked up this year with the amount of development so that's back but the uh, I think COVID is going to impact the police uh, tickets for some time to come so you might also want to give consideration for um, utilizing some of it for the lost revenue uh, which could offset any future tax increases not looking for an, an answer tonight but just trying to get it on the agenda so that we can start discussing it and um, if you have any other ideas let me know but you'll see from the uh, finance notice that the, the areas that you can use the funds on are pretty limited so. yeah it sounds like a no-brainer to, to uh, use um, a good chunk of that money for that sewer line and the lost revenue and then we can spitball anything else we, we want to uh, earmark that money for uh, it's going to think it's going to help us out um, uh, with budgeting and, and going forward so th that's good timing on that uh, the next item up is we value our veterans community award and um, that we talked a little bit about uh, last time that was brought to our attention by mr. Gilbert um, it seems like this would be um, appropriate for us to take a look at this and anywhere where we can um, get to that point factor um, I know that I had mentioned previously about putting the uh, parking spot out for uh, out front for disabled um, or wounded you know paint it purple and have a sign mm -hmm. I think that's a great idea I think we should look to do that and um, definitely looking at these other items I think we can move forward with a lot of them and, and see where we end up um, to make this happen and, and go forward with it. Does okay. anybody else on council have anything they want to add with this or, or whatnot? No, I, th I think it's, uh, I agree with everything you said. I, I probably would like to know, uh, and I don't know if Mr. Uh, Mr. Gilbert knows or not, how many of these items have already been completed or have been uh, touched upon? You know, which items are in need of uh, um, effort or and which ones have already been satisfied I, know, I, Jeff, I don't I don't think a lot of them have been satisfied we'd have to move in those areas some of them we're going to need some cooperation from the school right and the local businesses as well in doing them but I mean some of them are met with respect to uh, um, ceremonies for Memorial Day out at, the, at yeah. the site in front things like that but there's a number of them that we'll have to uh, we'll have to move towards uh, some actions in order to meet those those points. Yeah, and I think um, if we can um, get some cooperation from, like you said, the, the Board of Education, which I don't see why we, we wouldn't be able to do that, we can make some of those others. And if we can loop in some of the, uh, the, the local business folks, I'm sure they'd be happy. I know Lowe's already gives a discount for military folks. And if we can just get some more people on board, I think that'd be great. 
uh, haven't been assigned uh, the liaison to the school district, I did talk to Dr. Birchall, and we'll be meeting probably within a week or so. So I'll, I'll just mention it. And, great, and, and great. Let him know it's, uh, you know, I'll bring it with me and show it to him and let him know what we're thinking and let them, they can sure. think about it a little bit too. And then we can always use uh, Mr. Gilbert as a resource uh, as necessary because uh, we appreciate you bringing this up to us, all right? Thank you. All right. Uh, next up is the civil rights resolution. Um, this uh, seems like a no-brainer for us to do. Um, we want everybody in town, our employees, elected officials, and uh, everybody to conduct themselves in a professional, inclusive manner. Um, anything you want to touch on that, um, Jeff? We do this every couple of years. We've uh, passed a resolution. If everybody's okay with it, we put it on the public meeting for um, for approval. It also helps us uh, meet the requirements of the New Jersey Municipal Access Liability Fund with respect to the employee practice requirements that we have to meet every two years. Um, so if everybody's good with it, we would put it on the uh, agenda for next week. Yeah, let's get that scheduled on the agenda for next, next meeting. Anybody else have any comments or questions or... All right. <clears throat> All right. The next one is the Route 130 Corridor Advisory Committee. Um, Jeff slash Jim, you taking it on this one, or um, I'll st I'll start if Jim has anything. To add. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, there was a um, there was a corridor uh, plan that was done a number of years ago. Uh, the county is back to us, asking us to do this. Um, uh, assessment report and one of the things that we need to do in order to move this forward is to name a um, to name a, a group that's going to review it um, they they have a, a list of people um, or, or I guess positions that can be um, fill those areas uh, but one of the things they did also mention both in their literature and in a phone call is that the green team could participate and the green team could probably get some points out of it. I did send it over to Debbie De yep. Hammond and she said they'd be interested. I sent Perfect. her the plans. I guess she's reviewing it now to see whether or not um, it's something that they can assist with. But we may um, want to move forward if they're okay with it with um, members of council and the green team. And you may not want to have full council so you don't have to have notices on Correct. the meetings and things but we need to get moving on this i've already done some background i've had cme give us a little bit of background as well um, to meet it but uh, there's a, a list of items that we have to go through in reviewing the assessment report and then get it back to the county and then um, it's basically coordinating the state and the county and the town's plans to make sure that we're all in alignment uh, and kind of go from there so it's something that we do need to act on um, pretty quickly in terms of getting uh, this group together. Um, I think, you know, obviously we have to wait for Deb Hammond to get back to us and say, yeah, we're interested too, but it might be a good idea to put the green team on it as well if they're willing to take it on. Yeah, I, I saw the communication. I think it's great that they want to step up and be a part of it. I think it's a good idea. And then um, we'll get somebody from... Uh, council. I know we're, we're missing a few folks here tonight, but um, we'll get somebody that um, is interested in doing it, and uh, uh, we'll get council looped in on that also. Uh, Jim, did you have anything you want to add on that? Are you Can good? No, no, just, just pretty much covered it. I mean, okay. It's, uh, it's, a, it's like a planning document for the quarter. So I guess I should be, you should be, if you'd like to be. All right. Um, uh, I'm sorry. Vice President. So, okay. we're not... Oh, sorry. I got two. I was sure which one I should put on. Um, uh, we'll pick the the sub. When do we did? Do they have to pick this the uh, committee? We're waiting for Deb to get back to us, Deb. and so then will we be able to do that at the uh, at the public meeting? We, we can if um, we know like who on council is going to be representing. Yeah. Do you want to do that tonight, or or at least get some? With the only. Well, we have, I, we're I missing. We need, I think we need Deb before we you actually no. physically do it. Okay. Right. But yeah, I'm, I'm, I mean, if nobody's willing to, if nobody wants to step up to do it, I'll, I'll certainly volunteer to do it. Okay. I didn't, wasn't sure if, if somebody really had, like, really wanted to be on this and we're missing two. So, yeah. um, we can have a conversation 
And as soon as we hear from Deb, then we can have uh, somebody from council, whether it's myself or another council person, um, jump on that. It looks like it'd probably be appropriate if Jeff and I were both on it as well. That would be wonderful. That, yeah, that would be, would be one more meeting. Love that. Yes. I would love that. Um, but you'll, you'll, this will be something that is decided. We'll try, we'll try to reach out and get it in position to do on Tuesday if we can. Okay. Yep. Just want to make sure we don't we don't miss the opportunity or we don't miss the deadline. Does it have a deadline? It talks about the end of the year, but they really want this part of it done pretty soon. Okay. At least getting the, the group together. Didn't mean to interrupt. No, no, no. It's it's all good. Just it's all sure good. we don't miss anything. Nope. Cool. Thank you. All right. Next we have the sewer capital purchase authorization. Um, that is for the TV truck, uh, sewer camera truck. Yes. And uh, we had budgeted for this, um, and we knew this was coming up, and working with MUAs and sewage authorities, they are not cheap pieces of equipment. So um, you want to touch on that, Jeff? Anything sure. further? Yeah, I mean, we had it in the 2020 budget, unfortunately, and we want to buy it with a national contract. It's a little less expensive. Unfortunately, the company has a national contract got back to us on January 5th, so we missed 2020. So we put it in the 2021 budget. Um, it's within budget. Uh, we've done all of the necessary legwork for the national contract, so all we would need to do is put the resolution at the public meeting um, and then move forward. It's replacing a 1999 model. It has uh, much more in the way of technology to be able to examine uh, both sanitary and storm sewers when the public works department needs it. Uh, the sewer department will lend it to where we'll use it in those storm waters as well, uh, storm sewers as well. So if everybody's good with it, we would have it, have it in the uh, public meeting. Yeah, does anybody have any questions or concerns with that piece of equipment um, to put it on for the next meeting? No, no, just one question uh, for Mr. Hatcher. Do we, on a regular basis, uh, go through the township and examine all of our underground piping? Is that a plan that we do or just when needed? They, they do some of it. Um, they don't really have the manpower and, and the equipment to do it all the time. That's one of the things he wants to do once he gets this truck. Um, that that, that um, truck that they have now gets stuck rather easily in the sanitary sewer lines. But it is, um, he's been taking areas and examining areas a little bit at a time, but it is something we want to develop. They're, they're very fickle. I've actually been in the truck and watched them operate it, yeah. and the older ones are definitely very fickle and whatnot. And the newer ones work way better. And I know um, the, the folks I've talked to, they're really happy with the newer ones, but obviously they're really expensive so you're not buying one all the time so but um they are they can be fickle but they work really well the new ones so we'll, we'll get that on and get that approved all right um uh, how about the public works um for the purchase truck under national contract is that that's the backhoe right jeff yeah, it's, I, I apologize. It's actually a backhoe yeah. foot truck. Um, yeah, it's a backhoe. Uh, Public Works has a backhoe and um, two uh, riding lawnmowers. We don't really need any action on the riding lawnmowers, but the backhoe is also going to be purchased under a national contract. That's replacing, again, a 1999, um, I think, piece of equipment. It was in the capital budget and uh, the 28 day estoppel period or the uh, 28 days estoppel period ends at the end of this month so we'd like to have it on the public meeting to take action to purchase it with a resolution similar to the sewer truck yeah any, any questions from the rest of council or whatnot i think it's a no-brainer um kudos to the dpw staff and mechanics for keeping that 99 running for so long any other? All right, so we'll get that on, and we'll get that taken care of next meeting. All right. Okay, next up, the discussion on Delran Community Park Field usage request to shut down the entire community park for two different events. Um, it looks like the one request is for 9-11-21, and that is a Saturday 
it seems like there is no conflict and they can have the park except um and if jeff wants to touch on it he can but um with that um they want to have one of those uh bouncy moon what do they call them? moon bounces or all my bounce kids house. yeah bounce house all my kids are older mm -hmm. at the bounce house um and since um we have no liability for that um Correct. i'm not of the appetite to allow them to have the bounce house because we would be liable for any injuries or whatnot on that um but other than that i don't see any problems if you want to touch a little bit yeah, more on it's that just, um the only issue with that is uh, i think it was actually two years ago um before right before covid um came in the new jersey um, mail who we get our reinsurance from uh indicated they had they issue a series of um, regulations and essentially notified all of the towns that they will no longer provide liability insurance and they provide our liability insurance for bounce houses regardless of what you do they recommend if you're going to do it anyway <laughs> you're not you're doing it without insurance that you should that the only way you should use them is if they're going if the bounce house company is going to provide the um, employees that volunteers don't do it uh, and there's an another whole list of items that they're supposed to follow, but basically they'll tell you they will not provide insurance for you. We can't get the insurance for it. Uh, and one of the reasons, I don't know if you've ever seen them on um, TV or YouTube, but there's been a lot of instances where they've blown away with kids in them. They start blowing away and um, not properly anchored or, or what it was, but there's been some serious injuries and they will no longer um, provide insurance for them. So if you give approval for it, it's on the town's dime if, if we were to have an accident and get sued. Uh, the the so, other question is, have these organ the, this organization provided the necessary documents and whatnot? I haven't actually, the only thing we've seen so far is a request. Okay, I don't know okay. if can help us with that. or provided insurance, correct? Okay. All right. I don't know if their insurance, I know some event insurances do cover mouse houses. I know in the past when I've done DJ insurance myself, they do ask in the form that if you plan on having any type of blow ups, but I'm not sure if theirs covers that or not. I can ask that. Well, r right now, um, I'm saying we're okay with the event minus the bounce house. Anybody on council have anything to add or comments? Do, does, um, the organization that's applying for use is there a form they fill out that tells us what they're going to be doing specifically what kind of equipment they're going to be bringing in there or rides they, or they should be providing that with the uh, field request form i don't know if they've done that yet or not correct so they they provided the request saying that they're going to have they're going to be utilizing jake's place so that's the main reason why they want to use the community park um they plan on having a dunk tank i believe um a dj a few bounce houses was one of their items and um probably some like magicians or or clowns or something uh, it's just like a block party for i guess back to school event I don't, that's just what they've summarized and there's only a few lines on the form so that's pretty much what they summarized in that but um they're just waiting on our approval to advertise and push it out and they just after once they once they get approval then they'll start pushing for their vendors but that's all i know i can ask for more information yeah you. we we before um before they move on, we should get def definite issues in terms of what they're going to provide. And like, for now, the bounce house issue should stay the way it is until, unless you guys are satisfied. I would agree. If you guys aren't satisfied until they provide us something. Yes, at, at this point, um, unless anybody has anything else, that um, we're okay with the event provided they fill out all the documents and whatnot, minus the bounce house, and unless they have some great insurance policy for the bounce house or we'll take a look at that but at this point no bounce house well even if they do have insurance i would check with yeah. our insurance yeah. because we yeah. still may be liable right. regardless Correct. gary has, so, yes i uh, on that note and not to steal jen's thunder but i did have an opportunity to speak with um sal and um he said yeah blame uh blame the attorneys but no bounce house. No bounce house. Uh, he said, uh, there's just too much liability and um, we would be unprotected. So he was a big, big uh, no uh, from a legal perspective that we should not do it with bounce houses. Okay. All right. The next one was for August 7th. 
and that is a resident religious organization, Nigel Wells. Um, they want the entire park, 5 to 10 on the 7th. That's also a Saturday. Um, I know there's been discussion with the athletic folks. Um, if, I, if I can just interject, um, we have some additional information that Colin provided, so maybe maybe he tells us. Yeah, some. so I spoke to uh, Nigel, and they only plan on having around 100 attendees, so they would not need the entire park. Okay. And he was okay with utilizing um, the grass area behind the park, which is the soccer field. So he wouldn't need the entire parking lot. He'll just use the parking lot for parking, and then use that grass area for when they're just going to set up their lawn chairs, and they're just going to have like some pop-up speakers and a generator, and just have like a youth leadership event. Uh, with a few singers and a few other vendors, I guess, either making some, either handing out some uh, cookies and things, but that's what he provided in his event request. So we would need to have the bathrooms open for him and stuff like that yeah. on I that. I don't know it's, what the, if there's a timer on the doors. I'm pretty sure there is. And there is. Lock yeah. time. Yes. Um, so we just have to make sure that's set to stay open. And I, I did take the opportunity to speak with uh, Bill Toth, who's the president of the AA, and he did indicate that uh, that they did have some ball games, but that they could certainly have both events at the same time. Um, and he was fine. He didn't have he didn't have any in issues that would impact uh, their side of it. There'll be no bounce houses at this event. And there'll be no no bounce houses, houses at this event. <laughs> They're going to provide an insurance certificate, Colin. Or do you yes, have? They, they I, I believe in their request. I'll have to double check my email. Okay. With Melissa, they have to do that. Well. Um, I'll double check. That was sent over to Tyler, but I'll double check. Okay. We'll have to obviously have that, otherwise they can't. They can't have well. Okay. Any other questions on that, or we move on? Everybody's good. Um, next one is the uh, work on the two ball fields at Delran Community Park. Um, it's come from a previous approved bond ordinance, along with the authorization to move forward basketball court resurfacing at Stewart Avenue Park. Yes, um, this was, in, as you mentioned, in the capital uh, budget and the bond ordinance and is ready to go. We scheduled, um, just want to make uh, council aware of it. August 9th would be the day that they would take these, uh, and this has been coordinated with Bill, Bill Toth as well. They would take the two fields out of usage um, and do the work uh, to um, resolve the water problem, the drainage problem there. And approximately, it would be out of commission for approximately six weeks. And Bill is aware of that and is okay with it. That doesn't create a problem for them. And we'll rope it off so. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Any uh, questions from council? We need to take action on that. Um, no, there's no, no action. No necessary. action necessary on that? Okay. Perfect. All right. I guess next one, discussion of the bid reports. Uh, from engineer on 2020 and 21 road projects, I believe. Take it away, Jim. Okay. Uh, so we received uh, bids last week for three contracts we had out for public bid. Uh, one was the 2020 road program, the other was the 2021 road program, and the, the third was the traffic calming improvements. Um, I'll do the 2021 road program first. Uh, we received several bidders. Uh, the low bid, base bid was 342000 and change. We had three addition items uh, that were beyond the base bid, which were beyond the original scope that was discussed. Uh, what we went out for base bid was for doing concrete uh, repairs to uh, Ithaca, Juniata, um, several other streets in that one neighborhood where um, uh, Colby Court, Colby Way, uh, where uh, PEC and G and New Jersey American Water are uh, just replaced their mains over the last six months or even last year and plan on resurfacing uh, this fall. So we're going to get out ahead of them and and and, and do um, the concrete repairs before they do the resurfacing. That The base bid came in, I believe, within budget. Jeff, Jeff will have to confirm. The addition items we threw in is because the water company at the last minute decided to replace their mains on Fordham, uh, Edgewood, and Howard. And we were hoping if we got you know, uh, really competitive prices, we'd have enough money in the budget potentially to do that as well, but we didn't. 
So we're going to, <coughs> subject to Jeff's confirmation on the budget, you know, um, we would recommend a ward to Lexa Concrete for the base bid. Um, we know the contractor are pretty good. We've worked with them in several other projects and we actually spoke to them today. They're just wondering when they can get awarded because they want to start within a couple weeks of that, which we told them might be next Tuesday. So we would recommend moving forward on that. And then subject to, I guess, coming forward next year, I can coordinate with the water company when they want to actually pave Howard, uh, Fordham, and Edgewood. Because unfortunately, those are the only three roads where we didn't have a chance to do any concrete work before, you know, in between PC and G doing their work originally paving the roads and then the water company just doing it. And so, because we weren't planning on, we didn't know the water company was going to come in there um, when they were doing Juniata and all that. We, we had this opportunity to get the concrete done. So, next year, for the next, maybe next year, road program, I'll, I'll add it to the list if you want to consider that. If New Jersey American Waters can wait to put off paving next year, that's something we can look forward to in 2022. Um, okay. So that's 2021 road program. 2020 road program, that is for paving of Baylor and 8th, uh, Front Street, portion of Brown, and Creek Road. Uh, we received bids. They were good prices, but there was a little, there's an administrative issue in, you got to identify your subs in the bid. I reviewed it, reviewed it with the solicitor's office. There was a one word typo in the contract where it said bids, that, that a certain trade was not required. On Front Street, we run across some electrical uh, loops in the road for the traffic signal, and they need to be replaced, and it can only be done by an electrical sub. In the past, this has happened before, and we've simply rejected the low bid and awarded it to the second bid. However, you know, because there was one word that said not required in the bid, Got to talk it. in the sales office, we thought it would be best just to reject them and rebid it immediately and get the bids back in a couple of weeks with that corrected. So there could be no objection from the second bidder or low bidder. And we have a good window now to do that and, and still get the work done this, this year. This project is not predicated on New Jersey American Water and PSC&G. New Jersey American Water already did their work to Baylor, which we we're waiting for to do this work. So now we're good. We don't really have, we, we have a little bit actually more time on this one. So uh, with council's um, blessing, I don't know, um, we would want to advertise it right away. I'm, and I talked to Jeff previously about this, whether or not we actually do a resolution tonight on that or simply understand that if it's going to be a resolution on next week, um, we'd advertise before then, but still not receive bids until middle of August. Jamie um, drafted a resolution to do exactly that if you want to do it tonight to buy the extra week. Um, yes, since it's, I think we need to get moving on it. And since we have it ready, Sure. Wonderfully. Um, does council have any questions or objections to? Just one question. Is there, there's no way you can go back and, to each bidder and say, we uh, need to change the one of the specifications and can you rebid just that part of it or do we do the whole thing? No, it's the way it's, it's it, there is, no, we have, we have to rebid the whole thing. Yeah, it's, unfortunately, it's pretty strict. The attorney said no. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Jen. Just no, on that, then, you know, they'd have to start over. So you could if you want to start over, but I don't think that's ideal. Yeah. Well, we're going to give you a rubber ball to throw at us. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So if there's yeah, no objections, we're, we're going to walk on resolution 2021-125, which is a resolution rejecting all bids for the 2020 Roadway Improvement Program pursuant to NJSA 40A colon 11-13.2A and authorize re-advertising and rebidding. Can I get a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Mr. Jenny? Aye. Ms. Correa? Aye. Mr. Lyon? Aye. So moved, motion carries. All right, thank you. Oh, we're already planning, we already have the documents ready. We're at re advertising immediately. The new bid opening will be uh, August 19th with a ready for discussion for the workshop on August 24th. Okay. And then, thank you. And then the, the third one was the traffic calming improvements. This is where we have improvements proposed along the Grand Boulevard, um, right next to the, uh, the sports complex in front of the townhomes. Mm -hmm. um, and all through that, the Grand all the way as it comes out to um, the other end. <laughs> yeah, Creek Road. Uh, and then uh, on Tempe Chase Drive, uh, at the at where the two sports complex, complexes are, we're putting in like a, a pedestrian crosswalk and doing some concrete improvements to really narrow the road. 
just wrote this Tempe Chase Drive, we're putting in edge lines throughout the length of the road, restriping this double yellow center line uh, to kind of create a narrower road width for cars to drive and stay in their lane rather than meander. We have complaints from residents about side swiping vehicles and the, having a narrower driving lane to follow tends to lower speed limits. And then having this pedestrian crosswalk, which at a, at a narrow forced curb uh, narrowing of the road should help. And it's a similar feature that we're doing over on the Grand. We're installing some curb bump outs and some drainage and a lot of striping to really, because right now the Grand Boulevard, it's like 40 feet wide, with no stripe. So cars are just flying up and down. And um, we're going to put in double yellow lines, edge lines, curb bump outs, uh, and then continue that, the double yellow all the way through the residential neighborhood. So where the roads curve, um, keep cars in the inner lanes. And we also have some of those uh, solar powered speed limit signs going in. So um, also, is there part of it, the project, a um, crosswalk? from the townhomes into the park? Yes. Uh, there is, okay. Yes. Um, and sidewalk improvements along that one corner where there is no sidewalk now. Awesome, that's great. Um, the last thing, um, I don't know, and I know right along that Castleton and on the Grand, we have the yellow, no parking, and it goes down a, a significant bit. Um, I had a resident wonder if they can push we can push that even further because there's a lot of vans and trucks that park along there um so the sight lines are bad but with the traffic calming is that going to help alleviate that or is there a code how yeah. far you could go so down or actually, can yeah. we go down as far as we want yeah. i mean the answer to your question is yes we've had to actually had this problem at willow and um that loop road around uh, summer hill where people were parking too close to the intersection and you really couldn't see at uh, turning. And then this was like 10 years ago and then DPW went out and with us, we painted the curb yellow mm -hmm. and put in no parking signs here to corner. So what, what are the traffic coming for the things you do is we're actually narrowing the road and building larger radiuses at the corners where there's no parking is technically permitted, but people park anyway. So those improvements at Castleton and, um, should help. Will will not allow anybody to park within 25 feet of that intersection, which is not permitted. Yeah, I think so it's, that it's, will open up the sight lines. I think it's probably 25 feet now, which yeah. is a good thing. I, it just a resident did bring it up, and I didn't know what the code was. You can only go so far, or or something yeah, like that. Yeah, the, the, the Title 39, the, the traffic laws. You you it's inherently no parking within a certain distance of a stop sign or intersection. Okay. Uh, and people tend not to follow that all the time. Yes, so, I, I am well like, aware of like that. Fire, like, just like a fire hydrant. And yellow curb or not, you're still not allowed to park that close. So, I think most for sure, we did receive three bids uh, last week. The low bidder was Berg Dog Paving, but they failed to provide a bid bond. So, they have to be rejected. And the second low bidder was Black Rock Enterprises. They're, they're from up north. We've worked with them plenty of times on other jobs. Not in Delran, but in other t towns we worked for. They're really good. So we would recommend their bid was uh, sufficient. And uh, so we do recommend award to BlackRock in the amount of $327,550. And I believe that's within budget. Do we need to take any action on that tonight or? I think we were going to schedule it for uh, next Tuesday. Next Tuesday. We'll put that on for next Tuesday. All right. Yeah. Any questions from uh, council, the mayor? And they are within budget. Yeah. Awesome. All right, hearing no questions, we'll move on. Um, looks like working hours for Timber Ridge. Yes, I'll handle that. Okay. Awesome. Uh, I received uh, a phone call last week from the developer, which is Deer Horton, who's developing Willowbrook Country Club. It's also it, it was formerly called Timber Ridge by uh, the previous developer, who, who then sold it after the approvals were received to Deer Horton, who's developing it now. It's currently under construction. Uh, the new name is actually Congressional, by the way. Um, Congressional's name of the development? Something like that, yeah. I forget. I don't know the full Congressional D.R. Horton Willowbrook yeah. Country Club. Yeah. So, Deer Horton finalized Deer Horton's a developer. I don't really know the actual they, they, The names change all the time. Uh, Stellwag, there's like four names already. Um, anyway, uh, so the project fronts on Bridgeboro Road. It's a county road. And they have frontage improvements that are required by the county. And the county, so they have to get a county road occupancy permit. And the stipulation on, on every county road occupancy permit is all, work hours shall only be from 9 to 3.30. So the builder, as, but they do allow for the builder to extend that subject to them getting a letter from the municipality allowing for it or accepting it. So they're just asking to work from 7 to 5. 
um, which is consistent with your noise ordinance. Uh, the work along Bridgeboro Road will not involve a, a road closure at this time. They do, are doing a sanitary sewer connection, so there might be a need for a full road closure within a limited period of time during the day, uh, which would fit within their county work hours. But they, they still want to work overall along their one side of the road from 7 to 5. And, and in order to do that, it would just completely speed up how, how long they're actually on the road or working in the road uh, from. They, they anticipate it's going to take them about six weeks if they have to stick by the counties time frame uh, that would move it down to about two, three weeks if they can do from seven to five. All right, because this communication has 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. Is it? Yeah, is, I is, talked to him again today. He said he's only looking for seven to five. Seven so to five. Right. All right. Um, so if you are okay with it, then I, I would um, just have to do it, put a letter together and send it to him. But if you're not, then they have to stick by the county road occupancy permit. Right. Um, anybody want to chime in? Any questions, concerns on that? I'm. I actually don't have a problem with that. I mean, to the five. Well, the only thing I would say is some time, some uh, stipulation that uh, they can't be working in the street after, say, like, what's the time now? Four o'clock? Three o'clock? Three thirty. Three. 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 Yeah. You know, because you know, so that during well, the rush hour, sorry. where it's really busy there, they're not in the street still. You know, if they're working somewhere where they're going to be disturbing traffic, maybe they, you know the hours from. Well, that, that's the, that's that, that's what the request is. They well, want to they want to be able to basically do a single lane closure along Bridgebar Road, you know, beginning. You know, it's not going to start at seven, but it could start around seven and then not end until five. Right. They usually start setting that up at between seven, seven to seven thirty, yeah. and then they usually start breaking it down between four fifteen, four thirty to get out of there by five. Right. So, and I mean, I'm okay. Okay with granting that, Jeff? Do you have any concerns? Are you okay? No? Good. All right. Anybody else? All right. What do we need to do to make that happen? Just get them a letter. Oh, well, yeah. I, the the township has to produce a letter. I can write the letter on okay. their behalf if, if if that's okay. Oh, or I can give. I can ghost write a letter and put it on for letterhead. I was gonna say just a motion. 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 Then okay. Um, so we want to. Um, Make a motion to allow the um, the developer to work on the county road by the Bridgeboro Road Congressional D.R. Horton Willowbrook Country Club project um, for them to be able to work on that road from 7 to 5 p.m. Can I get a motion on that? Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. To it that they have to change the name. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll let him know that. I don't know. He's pretty respected. He's pretty like responsive roll, to. Uh, rolls off the tongue. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, we're going to move on to our reports. Uh, first off, uh, report from our clerk. Jamie, any report? No report. Uh, next up, Administrator Jeff Hatcher. No report this evening. Next up, the Mayor. Gary Ketchumbone. I have no report this evening. Wow. Uh, solicitor, Jen. I have no report for you guys tonight. Okie okay, dokie. Okay. Uh, engineer, have you said enough? Any report? No, I have a couple things. Oh, to okay. I'm sorry, I apologize. <laughs> Real quick, uh, Conroe Road Improvements, we have that, that was awarded uh, the earlier uh, this month. Uh, our contractor, Esposito Construction, we've been working and with the county over the last few weeks, getting all their paperwork in order, their submittals in order. They want to start working next Tuesday, our contractor. Uh, they're going to be working at the bridge at Swedes Run, doing some drainage improvements, and then immediately following those drainage improvements, doing the curve up and down Conroe. There should be, very, there should be no real impact on traffic. All the work will be kept to the one side of the road. Uh, once they do their drainage work and all, their, all the curb work and, uh, and handicap work throughout Conroe, the county is coming in and re-improving the bridge. They're going to be working on one side of the bridge and then the opposite side, putting in all new power pits and walkways on both sides. I don't know if you know the bridge right now, there's only a walkway on one. That should take about six weeks. Uh, there might be some overlapping of the concrete work done by our contractor and the bridge work, maybe by a week. But once that concrete work and the bridge work is done, and the bridge is the longer period of time it's going to take, that's when the road will be paved. So we're looking, we're running a little behind. We're hoping to have the bridge work started already. So we're looking at, pave, at paving in like September. Uh, we'll have to coordinate that with the schools, obviously, because it's sensitive moment. Um, and then um, 
Stewart Avenue, there's a drainage improvement project you authorized last week. We've met with the contractor out there. We had their submittals in. Um, they did test bits about a week or so ago just to verify some of the locations of the existing utilities we weren't sure on. That's all worked out. Everything should be good to go. It's only going to take two days, and they should be out there within a couple weeks. Awesome. Um, going back to the work hour question, I was contacted yesterday, so it, unfortunately, couldn't make your agenda, but Amazon's contractor, Great Core, uh, needs to do a very large concrete pour on their portion of the project. I say their portion because it's kind of split up between two contractors. Um, it's the big loading pad uh, um, in front of, uh, on the side of, of the existing building that they're renovating. And because of the extent of the concrete pour, they need to get started super early. And with the heat we've been having, they've been requesting to start the work in the middle of the night. Um, there would be a one night shot deal. Uh, they wanted to do the work next Tuesday uh, a.m. So it'd be Monday night into Tuesday. They wanted to start at 2 a.m. in order to get done, uh, you know, that day and within a reasonable early period of time to allow the concrete to start curing uh, before the intense heat of the day and humidity kind of would impact their their ability to do a you know good work product. Hunters Glen is right there, and you have a noise ordinance that prohibits anything before 7 a.m. So they've asked for the governing body's um, blessing on allowing them to work earlier that one day that, uh, to do that pour. We ran into this with Simon & Schuster uh, when they were doing their expansion uh, several years ago and they had to pour their interior flooring at such a, such a large amount of, of concrete and, and they wanted to get started earlier. That was because it was, Simon & Schuster wasn't really more for the temperature, it was more because of the expansive amount of concrete and the sensitivity of the flatness they had to get. Um, but for this one, yeah, they just seeking your approval. It normally we would say it's, we would recommend right away, but Hunter's Glen is there, so it's a little bit sensitive. But I understand the contractor. Now I was just checking the weather report. It is supposed to be unseasonably cool yeah. next week, so um, I will coordinate that with the contractor depending on how you feel about this. Obviously, you know if you are okay with it, Hunter's Glen would be need to be notified, and um, you know, but you know if the weather does turn and it's heats up again um they're going to need they're going to ask for relief and uh they need their and the, we would bring this back for a formal meeting but it's they want to have they they're looking to have it open up and ready for fit out by mid-august so um i don't know how you just want to get your feedback on it are they using union concrete i don't know actually. <laughs> tom if i could just add a couple of things um, just from the from you know, there's, there's two things that are obviously uh, very important. One is, uh, you know, the residents in Hunter's Glen. I think we should, uh, if, if, if you all grant that, I would, I would say we should reach out to Hunter's Glen and let them know that this is a one-time event. And it's just, the, the issue, frankly, is my concern is Amazon. Uh, they're, they're doing, uh, what did they say, 300 and some projects like this around the country. And if any of them go off target by way of timeline, that they'll just cancel it and maybe do it next year or maybe do it never. Uh, that was obviously the threat that they put, but they, they, they've been, the, the uh, landlord has invested quite a bit of time and energy into this. My concern is that we would lose all those jobs. So there's kind of a, you know, what's, what's the balance here? Uh, I, if it was going to be weeks, I would, I would, definitely recommend that that they wait until after the sound barrier because that will be where the the, um, uh, the loading dock will be in that area if you've ever looked at it it's not far from one of the one of the clusters in um, Hunter's Glen but they're going to put a sound wall up so unfortunately just because of the way it timed out it's before the wall goes up so this is going to be a one time one day event or one night event, uh, I think we should, if you if you uh, grant them this one-time use, we should advise Hunters Glen management to either advise the residents or be prepared for the inevitable, uh, what the heck's going on? Uh, is this gonna be ongoing? Is this whatever, so that they have the answer and say, nope, if it's, if it's morning, it's over, uh, and it won't happen again because they're gonna put a sound wall up. That's, that's just my input. Um, of all the various points of view that I could think of. Yeah, and real quick, so the nature of the work is just going to be pouring concrete. So you're going to get backup alarms from trucks, the, the sound of the trucks revving up. 
and generators and some lighting. You're not going to have any jackhammering, digging, or banging. So that that should be you know not even dump trucks banging from from like sometimes when I pass pave asphalt. So. Well, uh, I think also it's uh, in, with the summer and with it being hot, most likely everyone's now the air conditioner is on anyway with windows closed. So the impact on the residents should be probably minimal. I I think like uh, the mayor suggested, it's probably and you suggested as well. It's a great idea to I, let the residents know. You know, it never hurt. Any other questions or concerns from council? All right, do we need to take some kind of an action tonight, like make a motion or or do we do it the next meeting? What what's uh what's uh, their pleasure on I that? Mean, if it's just you just letting them do it. You really don't have to do anything. We run into this issue in another town as well, and as long as you guys say it's okay, and we can tell them it's all good and they can go for it. I mean you know, give Hunter Glenn notice that it's going to happen. Do they do they have a date yet or no? They're next Tuesday, next Tuesday. 2 a.m. So would that be Monday night? It would be Tuesday, August 3rd at 2 a.m. in the morning. But I don't know. It's not, I mean, as of now, when I'm looking at the weather right now, it's not definite because if that weather is a high of 81 on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, I'm not sure I'm going to give them the green light. I'm going to tell them I think they that you can still do that. If it's 95 with a relative humidity in the 60s, yeah, that's a little too hot and humid to, to pour that. So and that's been the consistent weather for the last two months. So um, maybe it just seems like we do have a, a, a nice break. So if that's the case, then you know I'll give them the direction. You know that if not 2 a.m. start a little bit later in the morning because it's still not going to get that hot. But I just need to know. You know, if it's a hard no or yes, they can start that early. If that's the if that be, the weather forces us to do that, and who's responsible? Do we contact Hunter Glenn or does I the know, contractor? I have contact with Hunter okay, Glenn, you do. And then okay, they're, they're, the the contractor is also going to be responsible to contact Hunter Glenn. So I'm going to let them know, and then have them let them know so they know the contacts as well. They have direct relationship. All right. Should we memorialize this with a, a just a voice vote or something like that? Yeah, I would just do a quick vote on it. You don't have to do anything super formal. It's not not a huge. Um, all, um, all right, so I need a motion to allow um, the contractor to um, start a pour at 2 a.m. Um, in viol you know, which not normal working hours, and it would be a one-time deal. So I need that motion, please. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion granted. Union Concrete. I'll let them know. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, we'll move on to council members. I'll just go to my far right, Councilman Jenny. Uh, the only uh, item I have is uh, the mayor and I will be meeting uh, tomorrow, in fact, to discuss the cultural awareness uh, project that, that we talked about earlier. And uh, we're going to try to set up some parameters as to how when we approach uh, the uh, different members of our uh, community, uh, what are we going to talk about and how are we going to handle it? That's all I have. Thank you. Councilwoman Perejo. Uh, yes. It was brought to my attention that people have been barbecuing around Swedes Lake. And I want to remind everyone that barbecuing is not permitted. And if you see anyone barbecuing around the lake, please call the police. That's all I have for tonight. Thank you. And for myself, no report. So at this time, I will entertain a motion to open up to the public, please. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the floor is open for public comments. Please step forward, state your name and address for the record, and we'll go for it. I should probably get in line. Bob Gilbert, 75 Stewart Avenue, Delray. Can you just hit that mic? Do, right yeah, hit so one of those. Right? Right? Yep. There you go. <laughs> Beautiful. Thank you, Bob. Um, do I need to say it again? Or? No, you're okay. good. <laughs> uh, first of all, um, I want to thank that you guys are taking up the thing about the award thing. Um, there is an um, email at the bottom of that that if you had any questions and, and for a copy of the application or whatever it is, um, to help you find the points that you need. Um, I'm going over to the school tomorrow. I'm going to try to talk to the superintendent because 
Mr. Burrell says I should go talk to him, and he's all in for this with the, the veterans going over there talking. Um, I don't know how, whether you guys do it or, or how it's going to get done, because it has it for the um, businesses that they can get the same award. Now, do you all have to put that out to them, or how's that work? Because I'm pretty sure they're not informed of it. Well, we can go through the um, um, our our business network and whatnot, and our contacts, and get that word out and word of mouth. Yeah, they need a lot less points than y'all do. Yeah, so we will make every effort to get that out there um, with the channels that we have available to us. Okay. Um, a little bird, <laughs> I'm not going to say who, came to me that <clears throat> and said that uh, there was a uh, what's the word I want to use? Um, an interest, maybe to revisit um, the flooding down on Stewart Avenue and Norman Avenue and Alden Avenue. Anytime we have a major storm and we flood. Uh, I don't know if it's true, but then I heard that to do it, you would have to do another study. And I don't know why, because we had a study done already. Um, the storm that we had, was it two weeks ago when we got hammered pretty good for about five or six hours? People on Stewart, Alden, and Norman had water in their basements again. Nothing major that I know of, maybe three to four inches. Um, after Sandy, I took steps of my own and everything that I own is 32 inches above the floor because that's how much water I had in my basement, 32 inches of water in the basement. So I had my own little in-ground pool there for a while. Um, it would be nice if you would try to revisit this. We've had two more trees fall into the water down there. There are no more trees that I can tell anymore. Um, and the bank, thanks to the county, we have less bank now because they put that walkway there. I'm waiting for that walkway to fall apart, the first flood we get, because the ground underneath is going to be washed away, and that asphalt is going to go right down the tube. Um, I, I, I don't know. I know this has been an ongoing thing, because Sandy was the big one. That was in 2012, and um, it's been like, People thought I was stupid because I kept coming and kept coming and arguing about it, but after a while, I guess I took their advice because nothing was being done about it. Uh, we get flood. Every, every time it rains heavy, if the high tide is up and it rains, we get water in the basements. Most of the people, like I said, learn from Sandy. Um, I got pictures up to, you know what, of people's yards underwater. I had two feet. I could have gone fishing off my lower deck and my... On the lower part of my deck, it's only two feet off the ground. And I had water right up to the top of it. When the water receded, I had fish and all kinds of stuff on the ground. Um, it is a problem. I know you all don't like to hear it, but for now, nine years, nothing's been done. Not a damn thing. And it still keeps happening every time we get heavy rain and a high tide. We got people that have been here for that long know about it again nothing has been done period um it's frustrating you pay taxes and i know everybody pays taxes but everybody doesn't get flooded when it rains that damn hard um it's something i would really appreciate if y'all would look into it again um i think the people down there at the 150 to 200 homes they get uh Ravished by the water would really appreciate it a whole heck of a lot. And as far as that, I guess I'm done with that. I would like to thank Mr. Burrell. Um, it looked pretty bad down there with the uh, new walkway because you couldn't see the walkway because the grass hadn't been cut and I don't know how long. So thanks to him, it got cut. He took somebody and told somebody because Riverside was all cut. Ours looked like a jungle. So the grass has all been cut. Um, other than that, I, I, if you need any 
um, with that award thing. If you need me to go find people or talk to somebody, I don't know who, like the VFW or the Vietnam Vets of America or the AMVETS, uh, any of that, I, can, I belong to all of them. I can talk to them. I don't know what they can do for y'all. Um, but if you need me, Gary knows where I live. <laughs> and uh, I guess that's it. Thank you for your time. Right, and we, we will certainly lean on uh, you for that assistance with the vet stuff. Um, Jim, did you want to have any yeah, comment on that, was, berm, on that berm study? Yeah, I mean, there was a lot there that I, I would like to kind of go over. Um, as far as the, the, the discussion whether or not there was a, a need to study again, uh, no, there isn't. I mean, we know what's going on over there. We know the flooding issues. We know there's, there's different kind of situations where it floods. Typically, the worst is when the river's high. Um, there's a lot of things you said. Over the last nine, ten years, it, a lot of stuff has been done. We replaced the one outfall in Stewart. Yeah. You know, that, that had a tremendous improvement. That helped with the flooding that occurred usually when the river was down. Yeah, you, we had a lot of local rain and the water wasn't getting out, so you guys are getting a lot of water you know, bubbling up at the inlets in the road and sometimes into the backyards. Uh, we replaced the outfall or, uh, at the wastewater treatment plant to help with that capacity. The one problem we can't do anything about is the fact that the river's too high and we get a lot of local rain, or if the river's too high and it overflows that berm, we have no ability to get the water out of there, so it's, it's gonna back up. That's the challenge we've been facing from day one. Only thing we can do is just help keep the frequency of these events from happening um, to a minimum. Well, and that, the only thing, I, there's less berm. I've been there almost 28 years, and that berm is at one third the size uh, that it was when I moved in I 28 I'm, years ago. I know, I'm not finished. So, and one of the other things we've been doing as far as the issue with the erosion of the berm, that peak height of the berm is still at where it's at. It's not, that hasn't been reduced, but the width of the berm has been encroaching yeah. up towards River Road. It'll be so, right on the street soon. Yeah, so over, I think it was like three years ago, four years ago, the council at the time, you know, offered uh, or approved solicitation letters to go to the Army Corps of Engineers uh, and committed to, you know, partnering with the Army Corps to look at and stabilize that entire berm from the, all the way around the treatment plant all the way up to, to Riverside. Uh, as of a few weeks ago, um, Jeff Hatcher and I had just discussions on that, and that project is moving forward. Uh, Army Corps has looked at the study. They took a federal interest in this, so now we have Army Corps as a partner uh, on and trying to deal with this problem with the erosion of the berm because we've you know, convinced them that the loss of that berm is going to have a devastating effect on the flooding of the neighborhood. Uh, so the project is moving forward. It's actually going to be on an agenda in a couple, probably in a, in, a, in, a, in a few meetings from now where we advise the council exactly what the next steps are. It's a long process dealing with the Army Corps, unfortunately. When, they first, when we first solicited them and, and met with them you know, three or four years ago, they said it's like a 10-year process and it's, it's showing that and COVID didn't help. Uh, but no, it, it's right now, it's, it's deemed a need of federal importance and uh, the next steps are going to be doing uh, feasibility studies on actually the construction program to stabilize that entire embankment and it's going to come before this council to enter into agreements where the, the feds are actually going to be putting a lot of funding towards this project. Yeah. The township is going to have to be sponsoring a portion of that and then we, have, we also have the DEP of the state um, ready to assist with some of the township's funds. So it is moving forward. You're going to see a lot more information on that. Well, the reason I see I have all that stuff too from the last nine years. Okay, right. um, I got all the pictures, all the studies, and all this, and I got a letter from the Corps of Army Engineers that says, yeah, and you, as you say, they're going to pay a major pro, uh, portion of it. Yeah. They say 65% they will pay. 35% to the to the township. But only 5% has to be cash. I mean, that's the last quote I got, and that was dated the 27th of February, 2012. And it's got it in the back, and it breaks it down for there's more than one project. But every one of them, except the last one, I can't remember what it's called, let's say, look it up, they'll pay 75% of that one. But there's about seven of them. And uh, it all has to do with Delran, and they're willing to pay 65% up to seven million dollars. So, I mean, I, I don't understand why it's taken this long. That's my concern. It's been nine years since Sandy. Sandy is a once in a lifetime, we hope. <laughs> but if it's not, we're SOL. Because everybody's house 
If you think 32 inches water in the basement with the bank even less than what it was then nine years ago, people are gonna have feet in their basement. Mm -hmm. And the closer you are to the water, God bless them people because they're gonna be under. Um, that's it. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Anyone else from uh, the public? Seeing no one, I'll uh, entertain a motion to come out of public, please. Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Hearing none, I'll close the public portion. Um, I'd like to now entertain a motion to go in executive session for resolution 2021-124 um, to discuss CWA negotiations. Can I have a motion, please? Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Hearing none. We will move, motion carries, we'll move into executive session. So are we?
All right, we're back out of executive session and we're not taking any action. So I'll entertain a motion to adjourn, please. Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? None. Thank you.